Well, when you get a haircut, you better go back home. When you get a haircut, get a barber you have known. Since you were a little bitty boy sitting in the booster chair, you might look like Larry Moe, cause it was strange you cut your hair. Well, Butte, Montana, just a passing through. One thing I just had to do. Had to get a haircut and I was worried for my hair. I felt the feeling of impending doom the minute I stepped into that room. Laid my eyes upon that barber chair. Oh yeah. It's a macho barber shop. Hair dryers mounted on a rifle rack. No mirrors. Barber chair was a Peterbilt. Barber walked in, he's huge. Seven feet tall, 300 pounds of spring steel, raw hide, wearing a hard hat, chewing a cigar. Had a t-shirt on, said, I hate musicians. Threw me in a chair, sneered, and said, what'll it be, pal? Now, a lot of people would be intimidated in a situation like this. I was not. I mean, I am what I am. Play my guitar, sing my little songs. I looked him right in the eye, and I said, I'm a logger, just up in Coos Bay, Oregon, been topping trees. Quite possibly the toughest, toughest man in the entire world. He looked me said, all right. And he gave me a haircut, and I walked out of there, and my hair was gone. Made Billy Ray Cyrus look like Vin Diesel, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. <laughs> I had a tremendous craving to operate heavy equipment. Now you may think that Butte, Montana was the worst haircut any man could ever get. Wrong. Well, a few months later, I was in L.A. Trucking along in a small day. Needed a haircut so bad it looked like bows of the cloud. I was looking shaggy and not too good. Put it off just as long as I could. And Lord, I hate to get a haircut out of town. Well, I walked in and I realized immediately this guy was into punk rock. Walls were done in black leather, had chains, whips, handcuffs hanging on. Barber walked in, he had orange hair, black mascara, stainless steel teeth, black leather jacket with zinc studs. Woo! He threw me in a chair, hit me a couple times, whap, whap! Chained me down, threw a Nazi flag on me. He said, I'm gonna tell you something might make you a little nervous. I laughed. <laughs> what could possibly make me nervous? He said, I'm gay. <laughs> no problem. I mean, I'm not threatened in any way. I mean, I'm securing my manhood. Everything's cool. I mean, I am what I am, playing my guitar, singing my little songs. I looked him right in the eye and I said, played football in high school. I'm a logger. I was in the Marine Corps. He said, all right, and he gave me a haircut. Boy, I walked out of there, friends, my hair was purple. Well, that mohawk suction down the middle was purple. Had a white streak down one side. The other side looked like Mr. T. Ooh. Had a couple safety pins in my cheeks. Huh. Whew, felt a teeny bit conspicuous. Lucky for me, my next job was in San Francisco. Heck, I went up there. I didn't even stick out. Yeah, heck. They thought I was a... Uh, uh, <laughs> they thought I worked at Dollar General. <laughs> a few months later, I was way down south. Grits of gravy and I hush my mouth. Hair so long I started to look like a man in drag. Well, it was there the sheriff walked up and said, Boy, you got too much hair on your head. You better get yourself a haircut or a dog tag. <laughs> well, I stepped into the shop. I realized immediately I was dealing with a born-again barber. You don't see him too many barber shops with a steeple. Had an organ in the corner choir. Usher led me to the barber chair. 
Barber walked in. He started saying grace. He said, oh, Lord, for these haircuts we're about to receive, maybe we'll be truly thankful. Dominus possum packs probiscus post mortem make two boot tail quail corbrunum. He's sort of half Catholic and half Baptist. I think he was a Catholic. That's right. I mean, he's a wild man. Scissors and razors are flying. He's preaching at the same time. And he's talking about liquor and wild women and music and sex and the evils of dancing and the music business in general. <laughs> they looked down at me and he said, what do you do for a living? Now, I'm not ashamed of what I do for a living. I mean, I work in bars and casinos around liquor and wild women, play my guitar, sing my little songs. I looked him right in the eye and I said, I run this church for loggers. When you get a haircut, you better go back home. Oh, when you get a haircut, get it bothered.